On this episode, we learn about the Pathways Commission in Oxford, Mississippi. Then we drop in on Do the Charleston Day in South Carolina. We visit an employee bicycle shed in Omaha, Nebraska. Brand new utility poles block a sidewalk in Washington, D.C. Finally, we talk with the head of Bike Athens in Georgia. Stay tuned. We're in Oxford, Mississippi, talking with Mike Mossing, who's chair of the Oxford Pathways Commission. What is the commission? Uh, the commission is a group of volunteer citizens who are um, uh, committed to uh, making a network of bike and pedestrian paths and for uh, enabling all citizens of Oxford to trans uh, to get from place to place, no matter what their, uh, their mode of conveyance, so whether they're in bikes or... Uh, in cars uh, or walking. So what's what's this path we're on right now? Uh, so this is called the Oxford Depot Trail. Uh, it is on the uh, the formal uh, rail bed of the Mississippi Central R Railway. Uh, it uh, goes through uh, Oxford and uh, to the edge of the University of Mississippi campus um, and it was funded uh, in 2007 by a uh, uh, congressional initiative uh, from uh, Congressman Roger Wicker uh, and the uh, city of Oxford and the University of Mississippi. So once you got started with this, what have you worked on since then? Uh, so uh, after, while, we, while the depot trail was under construction, and uh, so the depot trail is about a, a mile of a mixed-use pathway here uh, that's north of campus. There's about three miles of uh, uh, gravel uh, rail trail that we call the Thacker Mountain Trail that leads from the, the Ole Miss campus south to the highest point in Lafayette County, which is uh, 343 feet, Thacker Mountain. Uh, and that's a, that's a gravel uh, railway that uh, is used by the University Cross Country team, and there's also a network of about 30 miles of mountain bike trails through the, uh, uh, a wooded property that's owned by the University of Mississippi off of the depot trail. But once this project was underway, we, we uh, applied for a transportation enhancement grant. And uh, currently, we're, uh, we just received bids back on uh, 13 miles of additional uh, mixed-use pathways and bike lanes and bike routes uh, around the city and connecting north to a new uh, a youth sports complex. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, those, those bids came in a little bit high, and so we, we need, we're need, right now in the, in the middle of sort of uh, reconfiguring that plan in order to, to make the budget. Uh, assuming you can make the budget work, uh, what's in that plan? What's it, what's it going to do for the town when you, you know, when, when you get these things built? Uh, so uh, this, this uh, Oxford Depot Trail and Thacker Mountain Trail sort of made a, a north-south um, connection through the town, but our, our vision is to have uh, a network of bike paths and, and pedestrian paths that connect all the major uh, uh, sources of interest in town. So to go from the university to Oxford's historic square, to connect the elementary schools, the Oxford Middle School is just north of here, but we'd like to also connect the public library, the high school, uh, sort of all the, the places that people need to get to so that they can get to get there without, without a car. And so uh, to a large extent, that's what this second phase two of our Pathways project here in town uh, will make some of those connections, but, but not quite all of them. Um, an important one will be uh, there's a new youth sports complex which is, uh, has uh, uh, a dozen soccer fields and uh, in about eight or ten baseball fields about two miles north of town and that'll be connected by bike lanes. So the kids could actually bike to go play and rather than right. have mom the chauffeur take them right. everywhere. And, and another part that's not in Pathways Phase 2 but in uh, a subsequent project is, to, is uh, we've got money to put a BMX track and walking paths and uh, uh, single track uh, mountain bike uh, trails that are gonna encircle this, uh, this uh, youth sports complex so that uh, kids whose older brothers or younger sisters are playing soccer can ride their bikes or, or race BMX bikes uh, out there as well. And the uh, university campus, uh, I, you know, what's, uh, What's it like for, for pedestrians? Uh, the university campus, I think, uh, over the years, uh, it was originally laid out as a pedestrian campus uh, at its founding, and over several 
expansions, but gradually uh, it's been converted uh, more and more to, uh, to, to cars. Uh, unfortunately, a number of students on campus uh, are in the habit of driving from their dorms to their classes uh, in the day, which makes for lots of traffic and lots of headaches on campus. So currently, there's a new master plan for the campus to try to return uh, to the pedestrian orientation on campus uh, to alleviate some of the traffic and parking congestion just due to students moving cars back and uh, around campus during the day. Uh, and so hopefully that'll, that'll begin to be phased in uh, over the next few years. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've uh, pedestrianized the very center of campus, but gradually we're going to expand that out and uh, uh, discourage uh, vehicular transportation and encourage uh, pedestrians and bikes in the central core of uh, the campus. And how about the central core of your historic downtown? What, uh, what's, what's it like for pedestrians there? Uh, I think it's, it gets a lot of pedestrian traffic. Uh, the nightlife is, is uh, sort of, it's the center of nightlife for students at the university, for football fans who come to Oxford for football games. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's at the moment fairly filled with cars as well. And so the city, uh, the Board of Aldermen of the city of Oxford uh, sort of recognizes this parking as a problem. And, and so uh, we're exploring some, uh, some plans to uh, possibly uh, move parking away from that, that historic square and make more of a pedestrian, more space for cafes, outdoor seating for the restaurants and uh, uh, make it more of a, a, a gathering place for people rather than uh, for their automobiles. Um, one thing that may help also is that uh, Oxford was selected uh, this past year for uh, the American Institute of Architects Sustainable Design Assessment Team uh, visit. So we'll have a visit here November 1st to 3rd this year where we'll have a, a team of engineers, city planners, architects, sustainability experts to help us work through some of these ideas about replacing vehicular transportation with uh, pedestrian and uh, transit uh, transportation, which has just started in Oxford, and other sort of wastewater treatment, other sort of uh, sustainable planning uh, initiatives. So we hope to get the whole community involved and, and, and give everyone a say as to, as to how we uh, sort of preserve what, what we really love about Oxford and, and protect it uh, going forward. And talk about involving the community. Uh, so what I guess the first step would be bringing the community in and deciding what you want the community to look like. I mean, what, what, I guess that's uh, what, what are the steps from well, we're going to do something to getting it done, however many years in the future. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's been uh, it takes a long time. I've I've found. I mean, it's a it's a slow process. Um, uh, all these these initiatives and the the sort of uh, the stages you have to go through in order to get consensus just within the community and then and then to get uh, buy-in through the Department of Transportation for the state and, and the federal agencies that are governing this, uh, it takes a long time. But I think that that, 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 first pro that first step in the process, just coming to consensus about what we want Oxford to be, is really critical. Because once you have that, then the City uh, Board of Aldermen, the mayor, sort of the powers that be, know that this is sort of the will of the, of the, the citizens of Oxford and, and they're, they're confident to go forward and press hard to, uh, to get things done. And I think we're, we're sort of in that, in that uh, mode at this point. Um, uh, people are, are, are united and, and working together to, to, to push these things forward. We're in Charleston, South Carolina, talking with Tom Bradford with Charleston Moves. What is Charleston Moves? It's an advocacy group for alternative forms of transportation and really smart urban planning with an emphasis on that kind of, you know, setup. And, you know, it's not just about bicycles, it's about pedestrians, it's about mass transit, it's about just smart planning for active lifestyles. And you just finished a bike ride this morning with a bunch of other people? We did. What was it? This was the kickoff ride of the Battery to Beach initiative. The Battery, the place where the Civil War began is one of these iconic places in Charleston. The beaches are also emblematic of life in the, in the low country. So we've just started this initiative called Battery to Beach because we want to establish a 24 mile long safe bicycle route 
linking the beaches with the battery, and everybody seems to be quite excited about it. How much is in place already, or are you starting from scratch? Uh, there's a fair amount more or less in place, although it is not set up and improved for, uh, for, for cyclists. It's, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, improvements that need to be made in many parts of the route so that intermediate and beginner cyclists can feel comfortable on the route. And you actually have a lot going on in, in Charleston today. What's going on this afternoon? Well, it's a, another event called Do, Do the Charleston, which is uh, partly sponsored by Charleston Moves as well. We've finally succeeded in closing down a, a, a major part of King Street, our major shopping street in Charleston, closing it down to cars and letting it be just for, for pedestrians. So uh, again, it's, a, it's part of what we stand for, pedestrians and cyclists, so it's a great day. And when you have you know these events happening on a single day, how, how do they lead to the the longer term improvements that you're seeking? I think um, the publicity that we get, the number of people participating in the events themselves, it's a it's a part of the ongoing education process. People begin to see this, they begin to understand that wow, this actually does make our town function better and gradually they get on board and they, they join with us in putting pressure on the politicians to make these things possible. Charleston is an historic city. At one point, everybody walked for, uh, um, you know, for every purpose. Uh, does that give you any advantages trying to make it walkable again? Well, downtown Charleston uh, is as it was laid out in the 1700s, 1800s. And there are narrow streets, um, leads to very slow vehicular speeds. It's a, it's a very walkable, very bikeable place, although culturally people have, are still readapting to walking and, the, and, and bicycling. The horses seem always to have been here. They, you know, they're taking the tourists around, so they've, they've always been here. And several years ago, they built the new bridge across the Cooper River with the bike ped facility. Yeah. Uh, how's that worked out over the years? Are people enjoying using that? Well, it's, it's been a stunning, stunning success. I mean, some of the people involved in Charleston Moves today were the people responsible for spearheading that, that drive. And uh, it didn't look for a while that, like it was going to happen, but now that, now that it's there, there are thousands upon thousands of people using it weekly, and people are absolutely stunned at how successful it's become. It's become another one of those sort of emblems of the new Charleston. We're in Omaha, Nebraska, talking with Mark Weekly with the National Park Service. What's this shed behind us? This shed is the employee bicycle shed. We have a program that employees can check out a bicycle, uh, take a ride during breaks, during lunch, after work, or even take it out for the weekend. The Employees Activity Association thought it would be wonderful being down on the riverfront with the pedestrian bridge with all the trails if employees could actually borrow a bike and run errands or just for recreation. How's, uh, how long ago did this get started? Uh, it's been about two years now that we've had the program. It's been extremely popular. We get a great deal of use. When uh, someone comes up with an idea like this, uh, what, what, what sort of steps do you have involved in, in getting it from the, an idea to you know, having bikes that people can actually ride? Well, you know, naturally we are the National Park Service, we're a federal bureaucracy, so there's a few steps involved. And, and one of the ways we got around that or through that was making it an employee association activity. And so the idea was the easy thing, the next challenge was to get fun, funding. And we got three grants. We got one from Silos and Smokestacks National Heritage Area, uh, Auto Heritage Area National Heritage Area, and the National Park Foundation. So they gave us enough money to buy 10 really nice bikes and put up a nice shed to keep them safe and out of the weather. And you say it's been popular with the employees. Uh, is, is this the sort of thing that uh other offices might want to duplicate if they came in here and saw you folks doing it, that uh, it could work elsewhere, do you think? Well, I would certainly hope so, and I don't see any reason why another office couldn't do that. 
Uh, it, it's not that expensive. Uh, the bikes, buying good bikes, they last a long time. They're easy to maintain. Uh, I think it's a great idea for anybody that can do it. You got the <clears throat> pedestrian bridge just opened up across the Missouri River, you know, practically right out your front door. Uh, does that increase the potential for pedestrians to, to be using these bikes? Uh, I think absolutely. It, it now connects us with all the trails on the Iowa side of the river. So we have a, a great connection here. It just makes it that much easier to get around and get to places and, and commute or just for recreation. We're on Foxhall Road in Washington, D.C., where the utility company has been putting in some new utility poles. You might think they'd put it off to one side of the sidewalk where it'd be out of the way. But instead, they've chosen to blast through the concrete of the sidewalk to put it in the middle of the sidewalk. They've done extra work to put the pole where it's going to be an obstacle to pedestrians. Across the United States, there are millions of utility poles blocking sidewalks. We're told it costs too much to move them. But every day, utility poles are being replaced. Maybe because they're old and decrepit, maybe they're obsolete and the system needs upgrading, but for whatever reason. If every time a pole were replaced or removed outside of the sidewalk, in a few decades, the problem of sidewalk obstructions would solve itself. But as long as we continue to put new poles in the middle of the sidewalk, the problem will never be solved. Utilities should have more respect for pedestrians. We're in Athens, Georgia, talking with Amy Johnson, who's Policy Committee Coordinator for Bike Athens. What is Bike Athens? Bike Athens is a transportation choices organization, and our mission is to promote um, infrastructure and safety for pedestrians, cyclists, and for transit users. And um, we have been in Athens since about 1991, first as a safe cycling organization of Athens, and um, since about the late 90s, we've officially uh, became Bike Athens. What's this uh, uh, repair shop we're in? Well, this is the bike recycling program, and it started about 2003. And we uh, have received uh, donations from a, a few different places to um, for we get we get a lot of used bicycles from um, UGA. We also get them from the Athens Clark County Police Department impound. And what we do is we we turn all, all these used bicycles, um, most of them with uh, in varying degrees of, of disrepair, we turn them back into usable bikes again. Because the alternative is that all of these would just end up in the landfill. So what, what this does is, is it reclaims a valuable resource. It, it saves land, valuable landfill space, also um, extends the life of the landfill. And it also provides very, um, if not cheap, free uh, form of transportation for, for folks in need. What we do, a small portion of them, we, we resell to the general public. And what that does is it helps us keep the, the facilities open. And, um, but the, the majority of, of the bicycles that we recycle here we, uh, we donate to social service, service agencies that go out and distribute them. And on the policy side, mm -hmm. you're on the policy committee. What sort of issues have you been working on lately? Well, uh, lately, we've, we've gone through um, lots of different things uh, throughout the history of, of our organization. But lately, um, we just submitted, um, actually last year, we submitted TIP comment, for the Transportation Improvement Program that directs um, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, a three-county organization uh, that, that plans how to allocate state and federal money. Uh, we, we submitted comment on that. They've got quite a few rail trail uh, projects, um, but most of it is for road projects, and we submitted comment in support of the of the rail trail runs. We also wrote quite a few applications for the local um, one cent sales tax, the special purpose local option sales tax, and uh, some of those projects just became actually all of those projects, um, most of them became embedded within uh, larger transportation and public works um, organized um, and directed. Uh, sections of, of, of speed loss projects. So um, we also 
I guess mo most recently what, what we're doing is we are um, provide right now actually we're providing comment on an additional one cent sales tax, transportation speed lost. They are, uh, the, the local government is actually designing their, um, their design, their uh, project selection criteria for that. We've submitted comment on that. Uh, that is a, a additional one cent sales tax that um, was actually um, a, a bill that was uh, put through um, state Congress just last year and that will distribute monies towards roads, pit, um, sidewalks, bike lanes, as well as as well as uh, transit monies. And um, so that's the state of that. We also are involved with Athens Downtown Development Authority. We're, we're gonna have a, a volunteer from, um, from the policy committee that's gonna sit on that board on their design committee uh, to promote um, and, and help out with, with, with where to place additional bike racks. We've also got, um, we're, we're gonna, check out how much current interest there is in turning one section of downtown, one roadway, just one block into a pedestrian uh, thoroughfare. And um, any number of things can come out of that. We've also got um, the other things that we're, that we're looking at, sidewalk related. We are uh, currently involved with, with a big push to, um, to promote the use of side, or to promote additional infrastructure for sidewalks for the elderly as well as uh, kids. Because those are the two populations that really um, don't have a, a choice as to any other way to, to get around. That's, that's how they're going to get around. Um, and so uh, what, what we're doing right now is we are um, currently trying to work with, with our city government to try to realign the, um, the sidewalk selection cr uh, priority criteria so that we can um, put a greater emphasis on proximity to schools. And... Um, in addition to that, we're 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 keeping track of of the, the the flow of money from the federal government down through the state and hopefully eventually to the local government. There's also transportation enhancements money that that we're keeping track of. We are going to um, uh, work with some local planning bodies to submit applications um, for the use of that money to be used for a couple of uh, construction ready projects is what they need. There's one, uh, College Station Road has a, a bike lane project that um, we can do for that. There's also some safe routes for school um, uh, applications that we can, uh, for, for funding that we can work on as well. So there's a lot of opportunities that the local government doesn't always have the time to invest um, and to, uh, to make sure that this money is routed and to take advantage of this, of this money that, that could just go away if, if attention is not paid to it. So we have volunteers to help out with those applications. Um, so beyond that, that's, that's really just kind of the, the quick picks of it. We, we've got a, a lot of different interests, rail trail. Uh, we've got volunteers working on, on going to those meetings and making sure that, that um, that those efforts continue and providing their advice on, on those projects. All of these projects have to have um, citizen input and you know all this funding has to have citizen input. And so that's kind of, our angle is to take advantage of those opportunities when they become available. Uh, looking at one of those areas you've been working on, the sidewalk priority uh, near schools, What's uh, what's been going on with with children walking to school and sidewalks near school uh, recently? Well, um, Athens Clark County last year just rezoned. What they did is, you know, they, they before they had more of a, a school choice. If you were um, in elementary school, your parents could uh, decide. They had a choice as to a couple different schools that, that you could go to. Now they said, no, you have to stay. This is your zone, this is where you've got to stay. And what that did is it, it, it saved the county millions and millions of dollars on transportation costs, for primarily for the elementary school kids. Um, and when they did that, um, they also at the same time enforced a rule that said that, that we, we won't pick you up from uh, from your house and take you to school if you are within a half mile of school, and so, but the problem is is that there's an exception if they, if they if it's unsafe for that kid to, to walk they they have to pick them up, um, 
but still you still see a lot of kids walking in culverts along to school so either way there's a there, there's an interest in this county to to get kids to school safely so um Right now, you know, the county's saving a lot of money. The, the school district has saved a lot of money. However, there's a, there's a need in the county to, in the, within the, 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 the city county budget to, to really provide for that, for the infrastructure for these kids to walk to school safely. Because the last thing that they need is a kid getting hit by a car, which is a, a real possibility. There's about once a year, there's a, an adult pedestrian that gets hit there. A couple of years ago, there were two kids that were riding their bikes down down Barnett Shoals. One of those kids got hit and killed um, by a drunk driver, actually a, stu a UGA student. So there's a there's a real the, the there's an attention on safe routes right now um, because of the fact that they're expecting more kids to walk to school, and because of the fact that there have been there has been a fatality, at least one that I know of, just in the last couple of years. So. Um, there's, there's definitely a big push in that. And so when we submitted a, a, our Safe Routes to School um, one cent sales tax speed loss application to that Citizen Advisory Committee, that's about $200 million that they have to spend locally off that one cent sales tax in about six or seven years. Um, they listened to that, but then what they did is they put that right into a pot of just sidewalk money that they're gonna put on the ballot as, as now they've renamed it to Safe Routes to School um, and Sidewalk program so there's a real attention to that and they know that that is that naming it such safe routes and sidewalk program that that is gonna that that really is gonna resonate with a lot of people's in, in a lot of people's minds I mean you know this is university of town but the other half of it is is uh, professors and and folks that in all industries of this of this county and so they've got there's plenty of kids in the in the county to 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 make sure that they're safe, and um, and the city knows that because they because they named the the that section of the um, of the speed lost um, after safe routes to school. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org.